Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I am very happy to bring to you the one and only, the legendary Speedmaster Omega Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch. And this is reference 145.0022. And so much has been said about this watch that at a point I wondered if it wasn't a mood point to try and make a review. But then it hit me. I have had this watch for about three years, for over three years. And uh, I've had first-hand experience with it for all that time. I have worn it countless times in many circumstances. And most reviewers have a very short time with their watches. And I believe that this first-hand experience gives you a different insight on the watch. So with that insight, I wanted to ask one simple question that many of you that don't have this watch might be wondering, is this a watch for me? Is this a watch worth buying? And as you all know, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, so we'll be speaking about this watch a lot. There's already a reference that's been out, and, uh, well, at least for me it has been a bit disappointing not to see the uh, 3 to 1 movement on it, but I am sure that Omega are cooking something that will be unveiled for the uh, exact date or around the exact date of the moon landing. And as usual, let's start by a bit of history. I will not delve deeply into the history of this watch, as it's very extensive and many have done it much better than myself. And on that respect, I recommend the video History of an Icon from Armand Watchkai, and I will try and leave a link in, in the description. So just let's keep the key dates of this watch. So the first Speedmaster was released in 1957 as part of the uh, Omega trilogy of that time, uh, which was the Seamaster, the Speedmaster, and the Railmaster. So that was version CK2915, and it had the famous uh, 321 movement, which is a column wheel chronograph, and at that time it had the straight logs, uh, as well as the arrow hands. The second key date is in 1965, when the Moonwatch, the reference 105.003, became the exclusive watch for astronauts, the Moonwatch passed rigorous NASA tests to be chosen to go into space with the Gemini and then the Apollo missions. And uh, I'll, I'll leave a link as well of the rigorous of these tests. And it's pretty impressive that these mechanical pieces were subject to such harsh testings and passed. Uh, the, the Moonwatch was pitted against uh, many other chronographs, especially and most famously the uh, Rolex that was going to be the uh, Daytona and uh, this was the only watch to come on top of that which speaks a lot about its reliability and its toughness as a tool instrument. Reference 105.003 had a non-professional dial and still a symmetric case so a non-protected crown and pushers and the caliber was still the famous caliber 321. And for the most famous of dates, the 20th of July, 1969, this watch was worn on the moon by Buzz Aldrin. The reference at that time was reference 105.012, and uh, it was the first professional dial with uh, the already asymmetrical case, and that case uh, allows uh, a protection for the uh, crown and the pushers, as you can see in this model. And reference 105.012 is the last of the Speedmasters with caliber 321, uh, the caliber that is being brought back to life and that will be sure be featured in, in the Moonwatch releases this year. But the thing to note is that even though the moon landings happened in 1969 with reference 105.012, in 1968, Omega had decided to update their model and the new reference was 145.022 and uh, that reference did away with the famous 3 to 1 column wheel movement and brought in 
the newer 861 movement, uh, which was not a column wheel, but just a cam chronograph. As for the dimensions of this watch, the diameter is 41 millimeters. The thickness with that beautiful dome plexiglass is 14 millimeters. The log to log is a very reasonable and wearable 48 millimeters, and the log width is a very wise 20 millimeters. And don't let the apparent big size deter you. I have a 16.5 centimeter wrist, and this watch has never felt too big for me, either in a formal or an informal setting. And the beautiful design of this watch is one of its main selling points. The watch is a monochromatic style, and it's actually fairly conservative. However, there are some endearing aspects to this design. You have those that asymmetric case, and uh, those nice liar logs, very characteristic of Omega, give it a nice luxurious touch, as does the succession of brushed and polished parts, be it in the logs or in the case. The crown is also beautifully signed Omega. The push and of course we have that amazing back with the uh, classic Speedmaster Hippocampus and the message that was marked in the models ever since the uh, moon landing happened. Flight qualified by NASA for all manned space missions and the first the first watch worn on the moon. And the beautiful case design is complemented by a pretty sober dial, but it just manages to be balanced enough as not to seem too cluttered. And of course, there's the beautiful dome plexiglass that so many purists love. And for them, there can be no moon watch without this plexiglass. This reference 145.0022 and this exact watch is from 1984 to 1985 and uh, I have to say that for that time the quality of the polishing and brushing is pretty outstanding and uh, you didn't see this quality at that time in these uh, very much mid-range timepieces at the time. Let me remind you that up to the beginning of the 2000s these Speedmasters could be had for even just above a thousand euros, which was, well, not a lot of money. Continuing with the positives, this watch has been known to be a strap monster. The fact that the design is plainly simple, yet complex, makes it that it goes well with many, many straps and you can dress it up on uh, a leather strap, like I have done here, or you can dress it down with a NATO, and it will just look as good. But as many have said before, there is no such thing as a perfect watch. That will be a bit too boring. So what are the negative aspects of this watch? Well, first of all, one could be its size. Even though we have stated that this is a very conventional sized watch, at least for this age, many find it a bit too big, resorting to the automatic version, which is 39 millimeters. Another negative aspect is that this watch is a manual wind with the 861 movement, and uh, in this day and age, this looks like a very paleolithic trait in a watch. Uh, you expect them at least to be automatic. But the moon watch holds such a status that it has made from that weakness a strength. And it's part of the experience of this watch to have to wind it every day or every other day. So many owners of this watch love that unique connection than uh, hand winding this watch on a daily basis gives them. And I myself don't mind at all having to wind the movement. Granted, it's not my only watch, and I use it in a rotation, but still, 
I like most people. I believe it's very endearing to uh, manual wind this watch, and uh, that is very much part of the equation with the moon watch. And even though this watch was one of the uh, roughest watches of its time, it is no G-Shock. Even the modern versions only have 50 meters of water resistance, which is not enough on a daily basis, and uh, certainly not enough to go swimming with it. This example isn't waterproof anymore. I do not dare to wear it on a rainy day, and uh, I'm always self-conscious when I have to wash my hands wearing this watch. So to conclude, I'll try and answer that question that I asked at first. Is this a watch that you should consider? If you're an avid watch collector, that question is rhetorical. Of course you have to own a Speedmaster Moon watch. Um, it is the most iconic watch in the world. Whenever you see this watch, you know that you are dealing with a piece of history in here, and uh, it harks back to a time of space conquest, when humankind was set on something bigger than itself. And uh, it brings a nostalgic feeling, and I believe that this watch is all about nostalgia. From the design to the uh, moon reference, the heavy moon reference, to the uh, manual wine movement, this is a watch from another era that is living in the present. It has nothing to do here, but its mark is ever present, and more than ever with the uh, 50th anniversary of the moon landing coming soon this year. So if you watch this video until the end, yes, and of course yes, this watch is for you. And the pricing of these watches from the uh, 80s, even from the 70s of these moon watches is pretty low if you compare them to the Rolex counterparts. And uh, that is an anomaly that should not last for a long time. So with that said, thank you for having watched this video. Please comment, like and subscribe and uh, I'll be seeing you very soon.